Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my live streams on mathematics. And in particular, in this video, I'm going to talk about second order differential equations, and in particular, in homogeneous or non homogeneous problems. Now, I'm going to show you a really interesting way of solving them and a, a, a non standard way that you wouldn't see, say, in a second course in calculus or maybe even a first course in differential equations. So we're going to step through an example to, to sort of um, I give you a bit of a taste of what this method is. So let me share my screen with you. All right, so this is the problem we're going to look at. The dashes here mean uh, differentiation with respect to x. So here y is a function of x. And um, yes, this box equation is a differential equation. It has an equal sign and it has the derivatives of some unknown function y. So we want to find the function y whose second derivative minus the function it is left with 2x plus 1. Okay. So why would you want to study uh, differential equations? Well, differential equations describe a lot of dynamical phenomena around us. The particular problem that I've chosen here is a second order problem, which has lots of applications, but, but the particular um, problem, it doesn't really arise in any particular modeling. It's just a nice equation for illustrating the method that I'm going to show you. So let me show you the method. Okay. <clears throat> what we're going to do is differentiate both sides of this equation. And the reason is, if I differentiate both sides of the equation, the right-hand side can be annihilated to zero. Okay, this is a linear. This is a linear function. If I differentiate both uh, two times over here with respect to x, I'll be left with two and then zero, and some extra derivatives over here. Now, in previous videos, I showed you how to solve problems like this with zero right-hand side. Okay. What do you do? You um, form a uh, related um, a polynomial equation and you look at the roots, okay? So it's going to be similar with this. We're going to use the homogeneous problem to solve this problem just by getting the right-hand side down to zero. Okay, so let's start. So we're going to, so let's call this star. So differentiate both sides. star twice with respect to x to obtain the following. Okay, so on the left hand side I'm going to differentiate this twice. So that'll become the fourth derivative and this will become the second derivative. Okay, so I'm going to put that in brackets just to signify it's the fourth derivative of y with respect to x. Over here I'll get double dash and on the right hand side I'll get zero. Okay. Now the important thing about this um, form now is that it's a homogeneous problem. The, the, the right hand side has been annihilated down to zero. So we know what to do with this problem now. Even though it's a fourth order problem the ideas are still the same. Okay. So let's So this homogeneous or homogeneous problem, I'm just writing homoge for homogeneous, has characteristic equation. All right, so what is the characteristic equation associated with this homogeneous problem? Well, instead of a fourth order derivative here, it would be power 4, and instead of a second order derivative, it would be a squared. Okay, so now it's the same old story of what we've done before. The analysis doesn't involve a differential equation anymore. It involves solving this polynomial equation. Okay, so how can we solve this? Well, we can do some factoring, and um, um, we, will, we will solve this. 
So let's factor. All right, so the factor of lambda squared. Okay, so let's just put the zero in there. So I'm taking the zero and putting it in there. And I'm left with lambda squared minus one. And I can factor this square bracket into lambda plus one, lambda minus one. Okay, so now let's look at the solutions here. We're going to have lambda equals zero, lambda equals zero. Lambda equals 1, lambda equals minus 1 from these two brackets. So 0, 0, uh, 1, and negative 1. All right. Okay, so now it should be a familiar story. We look at the, the type of those solutions and then we can form a general solution to this the fourth order homogeneous problem, okay? So let me show you how that works. Okay, so you can see there's a pair of repeated roots and a pair of unrepeated roots. So let's just take a new page here. <clears throat> okay, and we will just make a note of that. So we have All real roots, yep, with one pair repeated. Okay, so that's the by that I mean the zero and the zero, and one pair distinct. All right, so in this case, we 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 know the form. Okay, so for the, the, the repeated root, we know that it's this kind of form. Okay, so the zero goes up here into this um, uh, exponent. So um, I guess I can do it here. Okay, so this, and you're multiplying through by this, oh, multiplying through by this x. So this then takes care of these two zero, well, we'll take care of these two zero, so lambda would equal zero here, plus, let's call one lambda one and negative one lambda two. They're, they're real and not equal to each other. So it's just a linear combination of exponentials. Okay, sorry, let me push it up. All right, so, so in this case, the lambda is going to be 0, the lambda 1 is going to be, say, um, uh, 1, and the lambda 2 is going to be negative 1, just from working off these things here. Okay, so let's actually write that in. So e to the 0 is going to be 1, because lambda equals 0. e to the 0 is, is also 1, so we're going to get bx out of that one. Here, a, b, c, and d are constants. Lambda 1 is positive 1, so I'll get that. Okay. So, this is a general form of a solution to this. And now what we'd like to do is touch up these constants, if where we can, to get the solution back into this original starred problem. Okay? So how do we do that? Well, let's take our y, differentiate it once, twice, and put it into our original inhomogeneous problem that we started with, the second order inhomogeneous problem. Let me show you how we do that. Okay. All right, so from here, we're going to calculate the second order derivative, take away this, and set it equal to 2x plus 1. So let's take the 2x plus 1 over to the left-hand side, because it'll just make it a little bit easier to set out. 
So I'm going to get 2x plus 1. And then I want y double prime y double prime minus y. So let's differentiate this twice and take away this from that. Okay? So if I differentiate this thing twice, if I differentiate this twice, it's a linear function, so I'm going to get zero. If I differentiate this twice, I'm going to get c e to the x, that minus is going to come down, and then another minus, so plus d e to the minus x, so that's y double dash, minus this whole thing here. Okay, so now you can see what's going to happen. That's going to cancel with that. That's going to cancel with that. And what are we left with? We're left with 2x plus 1 on the left-hand side minus a minus bx on the right-hand side. So we can find the a's and the b's. Okay, so a, a negative a is 1, so a would be negative 1. And uh, negative b would be 2. So b equals negative 2. All right. So now we can go back and replace a with negative 1, b with negative 2, and we've got at least these two constants. Now, a good question here is what about the c and the d? You cannot get the c and the d in this case. Why? Because this part of the solution solves, actually solves, the homogeneous part, uh, so replace that with zero, it solves the homogeneous problem associated with this, okay? So let's just write down what we've got and then I'll chat a little bit more about this in a minute. Hence, the general solution to our ODE star is the following. Okay, all right, so let's just highlight that. Okay, <clears throat> all right. Now, some of you will be thinking, well, hang on, Chris, in lots of other videos of yours, you've taught us to solve these problems in a different way. What you do is, is you solve the homogeneous problem associated with the original starred ODE, and then you construct a particular solution. Yes, that's that's exactly what I have done. That I have loaded the videos on that. But that doesn't tell you how you choose the particular solution or how you construct it. The method that I've just shared with you now shows that. Let me show you, okay? All right. So, let's just go back to the original question. You've got a second order DE and then you've got a, a linear function as your right-hand side, and what you do, you know, in, in the standard method, you set that to zero, you, you write down your quadratic, you solve that, and then you construct a particular solution, which is of a similar form of that, okay? Doesn't tell you where it comes from, though. The method that I've just shown to, shown to you shows you where that comes from, okay? By solving this fourth order problem where you have annihilated that right-hand side. Okay? Now, if you're doing this in exam, you probably wouldn't do it this way. You would do it the, the standard way. But I just wanted to show you something different to actually um, uh, show, like, basically convince you that, okay, when you construct a, a particular solution to this problem, you base it on this choice because you can see, ah, oh, there it is right there just through solving a related higher order problem. Okay? Okay, so what do you think? Do you like the method? It's called the annihilator method because you annihilate that right-hand side. It's not universally applicable to all these kinds of linear um, differential equations. You've got to be able to annihilate that right-hand side. Uh, but it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Anyway, what do you think? Hope you enjoyed it. 
if you have any comments or questions, uh, just please post a comment. I always love to read your comments and see what you think. Join me again for another video and live stream soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.